All right, guys, today we are going to be doing a longer than usual video. And uh, today we're going to be talking about my EDC knife collection as a whole. Now, I've been waiting to do this video for a little while, and that's because I've been adding a lot of knives to the EDC rotation. I'm kind of shifting the channel from more outdoor knives to more EDC everyday carry blades. So as a part of that process, I've been letting go of some of my outdoor knives and picking up a lot more EDC knives. So I kind of wanted to wait till there was a nice lull in the collection. Uh, and I don't think I'll be adding any more too soon. I'm going to try to get this video out pretty fast after I make it so that it's an up-to-date, at least at the time of publishing, up-to-date video of my collection. So it's going to be a pretty long video. As always, guys, if you want to see more videos just like this one, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, and the Instagram, and don't forget to hit the bell. We're going to be bringing a lot more EDC uh, life and EDC videos out because I have a pretty big collection of EDC knives. So we're going to be breaking this down to a few different categories. We're going to go over the multi-tool, the fixed blades, and then we're going to go over the folders. The folders are by large, or I should say pocket knives because some are OTFs, but by and large they are the majority of this collection and the majority of what I carry every day. So now let's jump into it. Okay, so like I said, the multi-tool. Now I do have a a wide variety of multi-tools. I have a few Leatherman Surges. I have a few Leathermans in general, but there's really only one that I everyday carry. And it's actually kind of two because I have two Leatherman Charge Pluses. This is a Leatherman Charge Plus. This one is in the Earth G10 version. I've just brought this one out because like I said, I have two Leatherman Charge Pluses, but by and large, this G10 version is the one that sees the most pocket time. This one has the S30V blade on it. It of course, has phosphorus bronze washers on all the main tools and is just a really awesome tool but by and large I don't tend to EDC too many multi-tools this is really the only one that I multi-tool or that I EDC with any regularity and it really just does it for me I really like the charge plus line because essentially it's a scaled down version of the Leatherman wave and it really just works for me so this is the only multi-tool that I reliably EDC enough to really consider a part of my EDC knife collection. Okay, now let's jump over to fixed blades. Now fixed blades, as I work to unravel this one, don't see as much time and therefore are a smaller portion of my collection. I do integrate uh, fixed blades pretty regularly, but these guys really do it for me. So the first one for me is the Browse Blades Silent Soldier V2. This is of course in the drop point version of it. This is really designed to just be kind of an ultimate little, you know, tiny EDC neck knife that can be worn very easily and just very minimal and for basic utility tasks. Not really designed to be a tactical blade, but just designed to be a really good all around blade. Now, outside of that one, and this one, the Civivi Elementum, even though this one could be pushed into tactical, these are probably the two kind of utilitarian blades that I carry. So like I said, this is the Civivi Elementum fixed blade. This one is also in D2, just like the Browse Blades uh, knife or Browse Blades Silent Soldier. I will also try to list blade steels as I pick up these knives. So hopefully I can remember to do that. But yeah, this is the Civivi Elementum fixed blade in D2. It's just a really great all-arounder and really do like it. It's a little bit on the large end so it doesn't see as much time but I do carry it uh, and I like to carry it like small back it makes for a really good carry for that okay so now pushing into the one knife that I would consider to be a good mixture of defensive slash utility is going to be the half flip is the half face blades or hfb extremis or extremis mark one now this is the extremis mark one this is a limited edition version of that one the traditional ones are usually a micarta uh, handle but this one is red and black g10 and of course i added a nice red and black lanyard to it to kind of complement and of course the blade is um coated and this is an s45 vn so usually the extremist marks ones are s35 vn this one is like i said s45 vn and so it is a little bit of an upgraded steel and this one like i said is for me really just a good mixture of defensive tactical slash utility and this guy is actually pretty small as you guys can see so i do actually like to and uh, do EDC this one quite frequently because it is a little bit smaller and uh, a little bit easier for me to kind of carry inside the waistband 
for a kind of duty slash or a kind of defensive slash utility blade. It really does a good job at walking that line between being defensive and utilitarian. And I really am a, quite a sucker for recurved blades. You'll notice with some of my folders that I have a few recurves and I really do like recurved blades. Okay, next two up are going to be purely defensive. And of course the first one is the ice dagger or tops ice dagger. And this is the in case of emergency dagger. And once again, just really a double-edged push dagger kind of style and a really great little blade, uh, really cool. Don't EDC this one too, too often because it is really more of a defensive knife, but it is nice to have as an option in the collection for whatever. Okay, last one up is going to be the G10 knife or G10 tool by Black Triangle Group or BTG. I always get a lot of questions about this guy, but this is the BTG Senka and this is their um, G10 knife or G10 tool. And of course, this one is designed to be completely metalless. So it's sheath system, sheath system, sheath setup, everything. There is not an ounce of metal or metal detectable items on this whole setup. So really nice, really well put together. I do like Black Triangle Group. That is their only knife from them that I have, but uh, it serves basically a good application of just being a um, non-metallic blade for, you know, just uh, non-permissive environments. Not encouraging anyone to carry where they shouldn't, but you know, it makes a good tool for those types of situations. And once again, similar to the ice dagger, you know, it's not one that I EDC too much because you're not gonna be cutting boxes open with it, but if you need some specific tool, it's really good for that. Okay, so that covers the fixed blades and the multi-tool. Now let's get over to the wild world of pocket knives. Now for me, uh, I don't, I'm not really gonna pick these up in any order, just I'm gonna try to, to keep them to their brands. So first one, of course, is going to be Benchmade. So with Benchmade, I have the full-sized 550 Griptilian. Uh, this guy is one of my originals. I don't tend to EDC it too much, but I've just had it. It's one of my first real knives that I added to my knife collection many years ago. So it kind of just lives with me for that reason. Next one up is the Mini Grip 556. Now this is with the blue handles 154 cm blade these guys are going the way of the dinosaur sadly but i really love these ben benchmade mini grips and even the full size grip i love these guys i've sold so many of them by recommending them heavily and i've used the heck out of these both outdoor and edc applications one note is mine does have the bug out uh clip on it and I think the bug out clip is a really great addition for the mini grips. So love these mini grips. This one I actually took to my Wicked Edge and polished up the edge on it just to give it a nice little touch and uh, yeah that is my uh, mini grip. Next moving on is kind of the predecessor to the mini grip and that is the Benchmade 535 bug out. Now of course this is the Blade HQ limited edition with the JG1020 CV blade steel and uh, this guy's just really clean, really great. This is one that, like some of my other knives, is very specific or mission-specific application. I don't EDC this knife terribly much uh, in general life, but I do like this knife for athletic and workout-related things because it is such a lightweight, minimal knife. It's one of those blades that if I need something for utility, but I am really concerned about either, you know, I'm wearing really lightweight um, clothing that can't really support a heavier blade, or if I'm I'm just trying to keep my weight down um, that's usually the blade i'll go for and having that 20 cv steel means it has excellent durable steel for a lot of a wide variety of tasks so not really super defensive kind of oriented but really just having a utility blade on me at all times Okay, moving over to the exact opposite end of the scale are my Adamasi or Adamases. So the first one for me is the 2750 uh, Auto Adamas. This is the full-sized Adamas in the tan handle with the kind of gray uh, Cerakote on it. Of course, both of these are the newer Gen 2s, so they both have the CPM crew wear, but this guy is such a hard-firing uh, blade. These Auto Adamases are so fun. I don't carry this one too, too much in EDC, but this is one that I do like to run for outdoors because it is big and whether it's uh, winter or summer it's very nice because you can have big gloves or mittens on and still get a good grip on this blade it is very much full size it's not the biggest bench mate I have but it is pretty much it's pretty close to up there and uh, this is just a really great pretty stout blade now I will say these gen 2 Adamas's 
are known for having weaker uh, access locks and that one is no exception. So I try not to like pound on it, but it is a nice knife but it is a nice knife for having a big handle, big blade, and it does can do some serious work. And the auto feature is very nice. Okay, like I said, the next one up is the Mini Adamus, the 273, also in crew wear. Now this poor guy has been through the ringer. I have beaten the heck out of it, so it does have a little bit of lock rock, but it is still tight. It's not gonna like close in on me. And uh, I still do carry this one. I still like it a lot. I really do love the Adamus shape and uh, just overall aesthetics of it and i think that this uh kind of avocado color if you will with the tan and green just absolutely gets me every time i am such a sucker for the tan and green combo and this guy i've actually touched up on my wicked edge i took it and uh brought it to a 17 degree per side angle and that cpm crew wear just took such a great edge it has a nice little mirror polish or uh, dull mirror polish on it so i really do like this knife and it's a shame that the access lock is not stronger on it but still do EDC it um, fairly frequently. Okay, next one up, and this is another one that doesn't see too much uh, carry because it is such a big blade, but this is was one of my grail knives. This is the original Benchmade 630 Skirmish, and this guy is, like I said, it's discontinued, long since discontinued, but it is a big titanium folder, and what really gets me is, once again, that recurved blade is just so nice. This is a blackwood design, and uh, so yeah, for me, like I said, I don't tend to carry this knife as much anymore, but it was really just a grail knife for me. I wanted the 630 skirmish so badly, and I really, you know, I, from the time I started collecting knives, I was like, man, this has to be one that I add. So like I said, it doesn't see as much carry time because it's really big, but it is a grail knife for me, so it will always stay in the collection. Okay, next one, we're going to move on to a few that I only have one of from their brands, and the first one is going to be the Strider SNG Strider, and I will likely add up at, I will likely end up adding more Striders to the list or to the collection, but I really do like Striders because they are one of the original kind of uh, collecting or kind of original brands for high quality folders. You have your Chris Reeve knives, you have your Hinderers, and you have your Striders. And so nowadays they're not as popular, but they definitely have a strong cult following. And I really do like how tanky these guys are built. These are kind of my go-to for tanky knives. I really don't like in general in general, I don't really like tanky knives as a whole, but the Striders are the ones I will concede uh, to because they are pretty cool and pretty well built and they have such a good history and lineage to them uh, being how old they are. So that is a Strider SNG. Next one up is the CRKT Pilar. Now this is probably one of the cheapest knives we've talked about so far, but the uh, little Pilar with the Flytanium uh, carbon fiber scales on it. And like I said, this is really my only CRKT, but I do really like this guy in the Pilar, I should say this is a large Pilar. Uh, it's just, it fits really well in my hands and it's a nice small EDC blade that is also incredibly easy to open and just really fun to carry. It does, I should say originally, that the uh, skirmish was S30V, the uh, Strider was S30V, and this little guy is 8CR13MOV, so it's not anything too, too crazy, but it is pretty cool, and it's a pretty fun blade to carry, and uh, yeah, I just enjoy it a lot. It's a, it's a nice little knife to have. Okay, now let's move over to my Microtex. So all my Microtex are OTFs, and so the first one for me um, is going to be this little guy here. Now this is a user in an abuser, and I definitely have taken no liberties on this guy. This guy has seen a lot. The tip is a little bit damaged too, but this is an Ultratech, Microtech Ultratech double-edged. It is the tri-grip, so the super, super grippy aluminum, milled aluminum handle. And this guy is purely defensive. Of course, you guys can tell, it has a fully serrated top edge, unserrated bottom edge, but dagger design this guy is just a mean knife fires hard and i uh, definitely really like this knife it is definitely cool once again it doesn't see a whole lot of action but if i ever need to pull a defensive knife that is one heck of a defensive blade okay next moving over to utilitarian uh, on the utility side of it we have another Microtech Ultratech, but this is a plain edged or single edged drop point design. This is the exact opposite of the first one, and this one is just very much EDC oriented. So if I do ever get in my mood of wanting to carry a out the front for EDC, this is usually it. 
both of these guys are in L Max, and this guy I actually took to my Wicked Edge and brought that edge back to 17 degrees per side. One thing I will say about uh, Microtex that I'm not a huge fan of at least on their uh, single edged versions, is they have a very high, very acute grind that is not very good for cutting. So I actually took this one back so that I could have a really slicey Ultratech. And so this guy is that. So very nice edge. Um, once again, Wicked Edges just absolutely do such a good job at sharpening blades up and regrinding or, you know, re-angling blades. So that's what I did with this guy. It is really nice, very sharp and very slicey now. This one I've also pushed into the outdoor applications. I've batoned the heck out of it. I've really abused my Ultratech and actually both of those Ultratechs and they are a glutton for punishment. They do a really good job. I know some people say they're not durable and granted, you know, if you have a really uh, really unsupported double-edged dagger. You might end up breaking it, especially with LMAX, but this single-edged drop point is very tanky in my opinion. And like I said, I batoned it and really ran it through the ringer and it's just fine. Okay, next one up, and ironically, my newest addition, technically, because I actually just got it today, is the Signature Line. This is a USN Custom uh, Microtech Ultratech, and this guy is from their 2021 show, I believe it was. I believe it was 2021, maybe it was... Uh, Maybe it's 2020, but this is from the USN Gathering, and this is a Microtech Ultratech. Like I said, this is a signature series uh, blade or Marfion signature, and uh, it is really cool. This one actually uses M390. It's the only M390 blade I have in my collection at the moment. Of course, this one is straight double-edged on both sides, and the kind of special part about this guy is it's using green G10 for its kind of show side. So it has the black aluminum side, just like my other two two Ultratex, but it has that green G10 side as well. And uh, it's just fires clean and it is just a really clean blade. It's because it's so new, um, I'm still feeling mixed about actually using this guy, but it is really cool and it is such a nice and kind of intimidating looking blade. So very cool. I really do love having my OTFs and my autos. I think I tried to go out of my way to make sure that I have a good amount of autos in my collection because Alaska is one of the few states where it's actually legal to own and carry uh to own and actually carry automatic knives. So things like, you know, my auto bench made and things like my OTFs are totally legal to have here and once again carry. So I try to take advantage of that unique ability by having uh, OTFs in the collection and, you know, actually carrying them. So anyways, now let's jump over to Spyderco. Now Spyderco, I've had more and I've had less Spydercos, but I'm probably going to get a few more myself. But first off is probably my most carried Spyderco and that is the Spidey Chef. You guys, if you've been around the channel, know that I love my Spidey Chef. It is a really great um, EDC blade, especially because of its high corrosion resistance and the fact that it is such a good utility shaped blade, especially for doing things like food prep. Love this style of blade. It is so nice. And of course, as Spyderco does that beautiful full flat grind, it is super slicey. This is another one that I've taken on my, um, what is it? My Wicked Edge and polished the edge up on it just to help it out just a little bit. Um, it doesn't need much help for slicing, but it is such a clean blade and I really do like it. It's pretty lightweight and of course full titanium. This knife, kind of similar to my G10 knife, is designed to be absolutely corrosion resistant as that one's designed to be absolutely non-metal. So everything on this is titanium or stainless uh, steel like the LC200N, um, super stainless. You can walk into water with this thing or you know just get it wet and it does not matter. Nothing on it will rust. And next one, and this is a limited edition. This is the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Now this is a cutlery shop exclusive, and this is a cutlery shop exclusive that is the green G10 handle with that blaze orange other or, uh, kind of show side. This one is also in CPM Rex 45. Hopefully you guys can see that there. And uh, I don't have much experience with Rex 45, to be honest with you guys, but I am really excited to try it in this blade. And I just really wanted a Paramilitary 2 back. 
I've had one uh, previously and it's been years, I think close to like three or four years since I've had it. So I just really wanted one back. And so I got this CPM Rex 45 version and uh, man, it is such a clean blade. It just uh, opens and closes. It's a drop shut, of course, and uh, it is just a really nice blade. And honestly, when I first got this knife, I wasn't quite sure how I would feel about uh, Blaze Orange and Green G10. But honestly, guys, it really is growing on me, especially I think like in the fall colors, it looks really on point. So uh, I do love it. It's spidey flicks out so beautifully. And uh, like I said, it just closes excellently. I love these. I actually love quite a few of these paramilitaries. Uh, the paramilitary two is such a cool knife. It comes in a million different flavors and that is something that I really do like about it. So I might end up picking up another paramilitary two, but who knows in the future. So next one up is a plain Jane Spyderco paramilitary, or sorry, para three, I should say. Now this one of course is also not quite as smooth, but is pretty darn smooth, pretty darn easy to spidey flick. Of course, this one is a drop shot uh, blade with its compression lock. It is such a fantastic little guy. And uh, for a lot of years, I really did like, and I still do like the paramilitary, or sorry, para three. I think it is such an excellently sized blade. If you are wanting a smaller knife, this is really hard to go wrong with, especially because these paras and the paramilitary twos are so easy to choke up on. You know, they're totally designed to be choked up on. So this one, once again, is S30V. This is a plain Jane, you know, black G10 handle stone washed S30V blade. But, you know, regardless to what you get your paramilitary or para, you know, in, uh, they're great blades. The design is awesome. And I really do like both my paramilitary two and my para three. Okay, next ones up on the list are going to be my Chris Reeve knives. So the first one, so my paramil or are gonna be my Chris Reeve knives. First one up on the list is my Sabenza 21. Now this is a large Sabenza 21 and it has inlaid my Carta handles or scales kind of uh, inlaid into the titanium. So like I was saying, this is my Sabenza 21. It is a large and it also is in a Tanto or Tanto tip. So I really like this blade because I think uh, CRK's Tantos are just so nice looking. They have a nice sweeping belly into that really sharp, very pointed tip. And this one is in S35VN. And this one, of course, I've flicked many times open, so it is super smooth. I know CRK hates it when you flick them, but this guy is rock solid, absolutely no play, no movement. And uh, it's just a really great knife. I enjoy owning it, enjoy using it, and it is just a really sweet blade and even if it wasn't something that I enjoyed carrying or using it is also packed full of history and heritage. Sabenzas are one of the oldest kind of high quality or high end folding knives out there so it has a lot of history and heritage and the design is so unchanged from its original uh, version back that came out back in the late 80s early 90s. So next to that, and kind of the spiritual successor for me, is the Inkosi. Now the Inkosi is essentially um, just a slightly modified version of the Sabenza 25. So the Sabenza 25 came out for the 25th anniversary of the Sabenza, but it was enough different that they decided, decided to actually call it a different knife. So they called it the Inkosi. This of course is a large Inkosi with the same type of micarta inlays. And for me, I really like the Inkosi because I like the kind of modernization that they did to the Sabenza with this knife. So I really liked the 25 at the time the 25 came out. I really didn't have money to get the 25, so I ended up getting an Inkosi and I've been looking for a large Inkosi for a while. They're actually surprisingly challenging to find. So I was pretty stoked to find a to find a micarta inlaid version at Monkey Edge, and that is where I ended up picking up this guy. Now this guy's still reasonably new. I have had it for probably about a month, but uh, still breaking it in, working it, and uh, yeah, sometimes I can flick it open, sometimes I can't, but uh, it's pretty cool. I really do enjoy it, and it is such a nice user, and I think in my opinion, it's packed with enough updates that it really is a worthy successor to the Sabenza line. So anyways, this one is an S45 VN. So this one is just one of the newer kind of upgraded versions of it. And it is just a really clean blade. Really do enjoy carrying this one as well so far. 
Okay, now we're starting to come to the end of the collection. I know it seems like a lot, but we are down to the hinderers. So this is arguably probably one of my favorite hinderers and one of my favorite knives in the collection. This is the Hinderer XM18, and this is the 3.5 version. Now this is a customized version, so it has the purple or has a purple handle on it and the uh, kind of liner to that purple handle is also purple anodized so it is just a super purple knife i love that aspect to it but i also love that recurved blade naturally and this one is also in cpm s or sorry cpm 20 cv so that is kind of uh, some of the customizations it does also have a skiff ball bearing uh, pivot system so it is super super smooth it's hard to convey through the video just how smooth this blade is to deploy but it just flicks right out you don't have to give it much effort at all and it is just a really smooth really clean blade and once again having that beautiful i really like uh, recurve blade in 20 cv really does it over the edge for me so it's purple awesome blade and it has some nice flares of course on this side with the blue scale and blue um, kind of clip uh, plate I guess you would call it so anyways this is my favorite hinder and one of my favorite knives I love to eat see the heck out of that blade this is just a lot of fun okay finally rounding out the collection with the hinderer xm18 and this is the three inch model now this is the first hinderer i got and uh, this guy is not as modded it's pretty basic so it does not have quite as good a flipper action uh, these stock hinders aren't always the best especially the three inch versions but this has a nice robust spanto tip to it and uh, it's their spear point slash tanto kind of tip so it's just basically just a more reinforced rugged version of a spear point and tanto or kind of borrows on the ruggedness of the spear point but still giving you that really pointed and acute tip of a tanto so this one is also an s35 vn and is just a really nice knife it's one of my favorites um, when i want to go for a knife that's smaller uh, this is definitely high on that list and i end up carrying it quite a bit also Okay, so that isn't actually the last one. I almost forgot, I skipped over one because it is a part of the Hinderer family. I have the ZT0562 carbon fiber. So this is the carbon fiber scaled with the starburst pattern on this side. This is a custom aftermarket a starburst pattern anodizing, but uh, this guy is my kind of user Hinderer, if you will. So this one uses 20 CV blade steel, but uh, this guy is kind of what I keep around for if I want to use a hinderer but use it hard because this is not as expensive. This is about half the price of a real hinderer, but it still has a lot of the great ergonomics. And this actually has the slicer grind of some hinderer, some hinderer XM18s. Not all have it, but this one does and quite a few uh, real hinderers do. So very slicey. This one, when I got it, was already a user. So the blade was kind of chipped in several spots and I haven't gotten it absolutely perfect, but I took this one down to 18 degrees per side and just polished it up and kind of tried my best to remove a lot of those chips. So in future sharpenings, I'll probably get rid of the chips fully, but this is just my kind of go-to user hinderer and it is a really nice blade. Uh, once again, this one is running on ball bearings, so it is pretty darn smooth to fly out. It's not quite drop shut, as you guys can see. Once again, it's not quite up to the hinderer quality, but it is a really good user and a really good blade overall. I have no complaints whatsoever, and uh, I definitely enjoy using this one quite a bit. Okay, guys, that has been a look at my collection. Like I said, this has been a longer video because I have quite a few knives here to go over, but it is something that I figured I'd share with you guys and that you guys would want to watch. So anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.